and they're keeping me in a courtroom that's freezing, by the way, uh, in a courtroom all day long. Well, he's out campaigning. We'll con we he will says, continue to listen to Donald Trump office. after the first day in court, but I think you're getting a sense of probably some of the notes that he mm -hmm. passed uh, to members of his uh, defense team and also some of the things he might be whispering in their ear. But we should do a number of fact checks. It is not illegal to pay hush money. That is not what this case is about. This case is about the falsification of business records to the end of impacting what was going to be a very close election. The prosecution is prepared to make the case to this jury that Donald Trump had instructed this payment to go forward, something that Donald Trump, months after the story broke, actively denied in public. So this already is hitting at the core of questioning Donald Trump's credibility in the mind of the jury. Oh, that's gonna hurt! And this, folks, is how you cover Trump. As Trump continues to nod off in cold courtrooms this week, the conversation highlighted by John Stewart, who has been on fire recently, surrounds how to cover Trump's criminal trials, in which Stewart highlighted the smorgasbord of superficial coverage around the case. This trial will obviously be a test of the fairness of the American legal system, but it's also a test of the media's ability to cover Donald Trump in a responsible way, a task they have acknowledged They've performed poorly in the past. To face the music. The legal walls closing in around Donald Trump. The legal walls are starting to close in on Donald Trump. Yes, this time, Mr. Bond. Now, here's the thing. Do I think we should be following Trump's motorcade as it passes every intersection in Manhattan? No. Do I think we should be discussing the fact that he continues to fall asleep in court? Absolutely. Yes. After years of anticipation, the first criminal trial of a former president has begun. And by all accounts, it is absolutely riveting. You know, the, the wheels of justice grind slowly. I did not think they would grind so slowly that they would rock the defendant, apparently to sleep at the defense table today. I, I, I mean, I have to say, I, I, do, I was not there. I do not know if he was asleep. It is possible he was, you know, meditating or, or just resting his eyes or something. I don't know. But like, that's those headlines, you know, on the front page of the New York Times, front page of the Washington Post, front page of the Huffington Post, front page of multiple news outlets today coming out of this that Trump appeared to fall asleep on the first day of his trial, those are gonna stick. I mean, I know it's not the most important legal thing, but we are in the middle of a campaign. Trump appears to be sleeping. His head keeps dropping down and his mouth goes slack. Tell us about that. Jake, he appeared to be asleep. Hey, Jake. What part of head down, eyes closed, drool coming of his mouth do you not get over here? He's snoring. Imagine committing so many crimes, you get bored at your own trial. Because after all, this is the same mainstream media that in the wake of Robert Hur's hatchet job ran countless stories and articles alike on Biden's physical and mental acuity to which the Trump team latched onto. So yeah, it is newsworthy that the man who claims to have coined the term Sleepy Joe does anybody think he's going to make it to the starting gate? I mean, the guy can't find his way off of the stage. And this guy gets up. Where am I? Where the hell am I? Is now drowsy dawn. His opponent, the whole Sleepy Joe thing, I mean, this is, as you said, Ari, this is the most historic thing that Donald Trump has ever done. No president ever has been, no former president ever has been a criminal defendant. And on day one, the headlines coming out of it were that he appeared to doze off. And to me, that's just, I mean, it's, it's insane. It's also a reminder of how, how, how scary, however scary and, and, and somber and important this is. We're also dealing with somebody who is just fundamentally buffoonish. Almost nobody believes there'll be an acquittal, which would take all 12 jurors. Almost nobody thinks that that's possible, including Trump's lawyers. Um, so, you know, we won't know the full political impact 
for a little more than a month. But right now, it is not a good look uh, for Donald Trump. He can't, call, he can't call Joe Biden Sleepy Joe anymore. He's falling asleep in the courtroom himself. So that, that line against Biden is dead. But also, as this MSNBC host exemplified, when he decides to give his little court hallway sermons, cut into them in real time. In fact, fact check the hell out of him in real time. We'll con we will continue to listen to Donald Trump after the first day in court, but I think you're getting a sense of probably some of the notes that he passed uh, to members of his uh, defense team and also some of the things he might be whispering in their ear. But we should do a number of fact checks. First of all, this is not a case about $130,000 payoff again. It is not illegal to pay hush money. That is not what this case is about. This case is about the falsification of business records to the end of impacting what was going to be a very close election. So on every count and the fact that nobody thought it was a, a case that should be brought, it is true that the previous district attorney decided not to pursue it. And in the beginning, Alvin Bragg uh, declined. He took, he took office in 2022 and decided not to bring the financial fraud case. But soon he revisited it and very clearly became the architect architect of a strategy and said multiple times, this is not a hush money case, tried to rebrand it for what it actually is, what the legal uh, accusations are here. What the allegations are. He said he can't, he's clearly trying, former president is trying to minimize this. He's saying it, this is bookkeeping. This is a payment to a lawyer. You know, everybody pays a lawyer, so you pay a lawyer. Uh, it's a legal expense. That's not what is alleged. He's also minimizing it that it's never happened before. Well, no former president has ever allegedly done the things that he has done. Uh, and he's saying that the federal government is doing this. This is political. This has nothing to do with the federal government. In fact, he said, why didn't the, the Southern District, meaning the federal government, take this case? The federal government didn't take this case. Uh, this is a, a, a Manhattan district attorney who took this case. So he's talking both ways about that. He's saying, why didn't the federal election people look into it? Well, everyone knows the FEC, the Federal Election Committee, uh, commission is tied 50-50, has not come up with a decision uh, contrary, con countering any kind of issue uh, for decades, actually. They have been stalemated uh, with appointments, so that's not the people that would have come in after them for election interference. It's one thing to offer him endless oxygen to spew this disinformation like Fox News does. And by the way, this trial is all Biden. You know, this is all Biden, just in case anybody has any question. And they're keeping me in a courtroom that's freezing, by the way, uh, in a courtroom all day long. So they've taken away his freedom of speech, and now they've taken away his freedom of movement. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Okay, time's up. Now get out. But it's another to point the camera at him and allow him to further the case against himself, which John Stewart did perfectly last week. And what this comes down to is that Trump coverage gets eyeballs. Nobody is denying that. And outlets will lean in to milk that orange cash cow. But just because there are those who seek to exploit the greatest threat to democracy for monetary gain. It does not mean that we suddenly shut off the camera and let him say whatever he wants without pushback because that is what happened in 2016. He wasn't taken seriously enough and his lies and fear mongering spread like a virus. It's a balance and I'll always push for less oxygen, more fact checks. Dear crime, wouldn't we love to have a statistic where crime is down 67%? Ours is only going in one direction. Listen, the president had all major police chiefs to the White House just last month. Violent crime is across the board down in most major cities. Uh, and that's something we need to talk about, certainly uh, as Democrats. The, the, listen, the, the highest jump in the homicide rate, the murder rate in this country annually happened in the last year of the Trump administration. It didn't happen in any of the Biden uh, years over these last three years. So again, the president is running on his record. Donald Trump is now, is a different situation than 2016, has a record he's got to defend as well. And I heard Nikki today said, yeah, I lost two. No, she lost four, because she lost the Virgin Islands, which she tried like hell to get. We won that too, a lot of people don't know that. 
But then we went to Nevada. All right, we're continuing monitoring uh, the president's remarks, and I need no offense to him, or some of you might want to continue hearing, but I did have to say that uh, even though the former president is entitled to his opinion, he's, he's not entitled to his own set of facts. Hey! Furthermore, he mentioned about gas prices out of whack, $6 a gallon. The national average right now is $3.20. Went on to talk about the uh, 2020 election and how that was rigged. Uh, this has been adjudicated many, many times, dozens of times. Donald Trump lost each and every one of those states. Stop! He's already dead.